prepare yourself. How many of you are ready for today's message? worship that we've given to you. Lord, we know that you're worthy to receive it. You are worthy. You are worth more. You are beyond even what we can say and do, Lord. But we thank you for accepting the sacrifice of our lips. We thank you, Lord, for what you are about to do today, Jesus. Speak to us, Lord, that thy word will mold us and shape us and transform us. We love you and thank you today. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Everyone says amen. We've got one more hand. Please. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know if uh, my kids are watching or my family is watching, but I want to let them know that I'm preaching. I'm going to be on my way and see you guys tonight. For some people, that doesn't mean anything, but if you travel as much as maybe myself or even Brother Anthony, we have to sometimes leave and we have to sneak out at, and during the day and let your kids see you back. Where are you going, Daddy? Can I come with you? I mean, I'm going to go preach a camp. I can go too. I mean, I'm going to Texas. I, can, I love Texas. <laughs> So if they're watching that, it will be home tonight. Hallelujah. Let me get into the Word because I, I think I think it is uh, phenomenal how the Word of God is able to do what, what we cannot do, the Word of God is able to do. The Word of God is very powerful. It, it is it is it's life. It's life. It's life. It's, it's transforming power. The Word of God is able to transform us and mold us and shape us. And, and allow us to be able to walk. The Word of God, uh, it, it transforms us by, by changing the way we think and our mindset. It, it changes it. Uh, because, the, because what we have on the inside begins to make manifest on what's on the outside. Follow me, follow me, follow me. Whatever we have on the inside, whatever seer begins to make its way on the outside, it, it comes out on the inside. It comes out, it comes out on what we say. Because the Bible says that from the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So what I have in here becomes made manifest out here. What I'm thinking in here and in here begins to make manifest. You can see it on the outside. You, you can tell, you can look at people. And I know this is contrary to what people say. You can't judge a book by its cover, but in the, 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 the real sense of it, whatever we have in here is what we have out here. Yeah. It is. And, and, and I love the Word of God because it is important to worship the Lord. It is important to, to, to praise Him and to worship Him. Because worship and praise, it, it touches our psyche, it touches our mind, it touches our spirit. And we, we associate, we associate with like-mindedness. I'm going to help you today. We associate with like-mindedness. And most of your friends, if not all of your friends, you have something in common. You are attracted to them because of what they're thinking, because of what they're doing, because of hobbies, because of like-mindedness. You're sitting next to somebody that 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 if they're your friend that because of something, something. You guys all wear the, the, the same style of clothes, or you listen to the same style of music, or you like the same type of guys or girls, and hopefully guys like girls and girls like guys. I mean, that's another picture. Even then in the church, you can have a church of 50 people or a church of 500 people or a church of 2,000 people and people will find each other that are attracted to each other by the likeness in their thought. They will find each other. They will. In a church of 50, you will find the people that are gossipers. They will find each other. They're having gossip conventions at McDonald's after church. <laughs> you can they can go to a convention for the very first time, and by the time the convention is over, they will find where the gossip section right. is. <laughs> the worshipers will come together. They're the ones that they'll feel as if this is the right area. It's here because I feel something. And they say, praise the Lord. Just how they say, praise the Lord, it is attracting because black men. Desire is, and sometimes I don't even 
people here. And then you ain't married to them, I'm gonna help you. If you think that you, you don't understand what I'm gonna tell you, but remember folks, you gotta help me out tonight. Because when you're married, you realize that you can't live like you're single. Oh, you shouldn't live like you're single. Mm -hmm. That's another preaching. Because we got people that get in trouble with their husbands and their wives because they've not left the past behind them. And when you're married, there are certain things that you can't do that you shouldn't do. Not that you can't do them, let me rephrase that. There are certain things that you shouldn't do. But you don't do them because they make you not to do them. You do them because you say, I would rather do this than do that. And a lot of times it's really to avoid certain conflict that are avoidable. I, I, I'm, really, I'm really preaching right now. Hear, hear me. Because there, there, I, I can go home at whatever time I want to a grown man. I can get home. Nobody tells me what time to get home. But I don't get home at 3, 4 in the morning every night. Because I have a wife that is worried about me. Because I have children that I got to make sure that before they go to bed.
Here's a what not to do. Don't get married and say, well, well, let me tell the sister, let me ask the sister a little quick survey. How would you like to marry somebody and then they have a list of things that you're not good at, you can't do, and you don't look like, and have them read it to you. But, you know, I know we've been married three months and uh, you don't look like sister so and so. You know, you've been cooking for about three months and I don't, I don't, you don't know how to cook. Huh? <laughs> Uh, three months and come in here and bunch of clothes on the floor of our house and you won't clean her a little bit. Now, you don't need to be a brain surgeon to realize that that marriage is kind of going south because we are looking at the things that we cannot do instead of focusing on what we can do. God has given me a message that I'm going to preach tomorrow in my local church because it talks about God giving us one more chance because it's going to hold us accountable to whatever he has given to us. And everything that he's given to us is according to what we are able to handle. Ooh, I'm going to preach right now. Whatever God has given to you, whatever talent you have, the Bible says that he gave some five, he gave some one, two, and he gave another one, one. According to the abilities, that right there lets me know that I should never be jealous of the brother next to me. Not because you have God inside of you. They're hanging around you. 
mind up. Number one, live for the Lord. Live for the Lord. No hidden agendas. Some folks, they in here. Some folks come to church to see who they can hook up with. Come to church to see who they can meet. Come to church to see if they can expand their business. Come to church to see if they can sell some stuff to the brothers. Come to church to find a job. Come to church to get something. And I'm telling you right now that when you learn to live for the Lord, you lay down your agenda and you say, Thy will be done. She was willing to crave unto Naomi. She was willing to leave the past behind and willing to fight in her present and walk into her future. Say it again, leaving her past behind her. I gotta take two minutes just to explain that for a little bit. Because whenever we are living still in our past, there is no way we can walk into what God has for us. Because we're living there are some folks that haven't been able to go into deeper levels of God. Because you're still upset at what happened to you five years ago. Worry. Went through a breakup. Still haven't recovered. He already moved on and married, have a kid, and you're still wondering what happened. And if you are unwilling to leave your past, you will be bound and chained to your path. Never be able to progress. And if you are not willing to in your present fight, whatever battles come, whatever battles come, if you are unwilling to do that, then you will never be able to walk in your present. I wish I could tell you that every time you are about to go into a new level and a new dimension, there is always an exit exam from the level that you're in. There is always an exit test before you move in to the next level, which is if you've ever been fighting your life, fighting in your life, something so hard, you have reached the end of the level that you're in, and you are about to break through into the next level. That's when some people just turn back and say, I'm ready for the Lord, but this is a routine. I know it's tough, and I can go back. I'm a young lady. I'm beautiful. I have no children. I can go back and get married again if I want to, but there is something about the God. Determine yourself. Have determination. Verse 18 says that she was steadfastly minded. She was steadfastly minded. She had set her eyes. She had set her mind. She had set her life to follow Naomi. You have to be able to set goals. I want to say set goals. What are you going to do? What are your goals? What are you going to do? What is, what are we doing? Come on, preach. Amen. Come on. Come on. What am I doing? Go ahead. In five years, three years, one year, 12 months, three months, quarters, every month, week, and daily basis. Because if you never set a goal, you'll never know when you reach it. Yeah. No goals. Find somebody. Oh, Lord. Young man, find a young lady who has goals. Young lady, find a man that has goals. What are you going to do with your life? The Lord is coming. Let me tell you. Let me tell you this. When I was leaving my wife, I was 19 years old when I went to Phoenix Convention. That's where the blessing is in Phoenix, I believe. <laughs> I was there, and when I was there, I saw the most beautiful woman that came out, and I looked at her and I said, I remember you. She said, when she was little, when we were in Lansing, Michigan, her dad was my pastor, and they were the PKs of the church, and I remember them. And when she was out there, we began to talk. 
And then I started realizing that, that that baby, she was compatible. She was a pastor's daughter, and she was compatible. So the very next year at convention, at the social, praise the Lord for the social. <laughs> Walked outside, and I would recommend this. This is for the lighthearted. You got to be fasting and praying if you got to do what I'm going to tell you. And I brought her out, and I said, Can we talk for a little bit outside in the lobby? We were there. And I said, You know, um, um, <laughs> I said, I like you. I don't know whether to write a note that said, If you like me, circle yes. <laughs> I was nervous. And I said, I like you. And, 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 and I don't know why I said what I said. I don't recommend that you don't say this. I said, look, I said, I want you to be my girlfriend, but I live in Houston. We're about 1,700 miles apart. I can't call you every day. That's before cell phones and emails and text messages. We were talking about four or $500 a month on cell phone charges. I mean, I mean, home charge at AT&T. <laughs> and I said, I can't do that. I want to be a preacher one day. I want to be a pastor one day. And I told her, if this isn't the road that you want to walk, I won't waste your time and don't waste my time. But this is where I believe the Lord is leading me. Yeah. 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 That the person she was about to marry had some goals. Now sometimes, and I know God changes them, but until he does, this is where I'm walking. And she said, well, I always dreamed that the Lord would send me somebody that was a godly man. And, and, and I know I wasn't too good looking, and she was beautiful. And I said, well, I know love is blind, praise God. But at least she loves the Lord. Maybe the Lord is shining, and she can't really see me. Hallelujah. But I said, this is where I'm going. And ever since that day, we started dating, and we dated, and we took notes, and we dated for a long time. Hallelujah. <laughs> Five and a half years later, we were walking down the aisle, and she said, I do. And I said, me too. Hallelujah. We were there hoping for the Lord. Why did I share that with you? Because some of you are more interested in somebody that's just superficially telling you what you want to hear. Who I love the Lord, but never comes to prayer.
stability, which is my third point. Her stability. She was willing to stay with her. And she says, I ain't going. I'm not leaving. I've made up my mind. I don't know where we're going to be going. All I know is that if God is leading us, we're going to get there in the name of Jesus. I don't know what's going to happen. Thank you. 
Just close your eyes and raise your hands. Lord, in this hour, you are preparing us for something that's about to happen. I can't put my finger on it, but I feel something is about to For no apparent reason, only because God is saying, you gotta start purge yourself in your life, moving it out of your way, because I'm taking you from this level to a higher level, and you cannot bring back into your leftover stuff. Prepare yourself. Now in the name of Jesus. 